where Nofer is the most important guy, but his half brother Jibu doesn't like him. Why? Where Nofer's son of who is now dead, has to go to Jibu to eat his bread. Where Nofer is a goldsmith working at Reeks, but Jibu doesn't like this. He really freaks. He says to Renofer, no more gold. Your constant talk of ingots is really getting old. The poor guy Renofer is now a stone cutter. Jeebus says he got to work to earn the bread and butter. Then one night, Renofer is sneaking up the stairs, afraid of ghosts and cats because he really gets a scare. He lifts the latch and pushes the door, and to his surprise, a golden goblet in them before his eyes. He won't tell his best friend to ancient and heck it, because he knows they'll really make a racket. Now on this cup, there was some hieroglyphs, which leads our protagonist to wonder if. The evil Wabajibu is slain from above, but as far as he knows, that's against the law. Then he remembers when he asked about a room, which is probably an entrance to a pharaoh's tomb. So one day, Jibu went for an early morning run, and Renofer decided to follow him, just for fun. He and his buddy went among the mist and met each other at a desert basin. To be more specific, a broken tree where Renofer fell down and he skinned his knee. He looked ahead and saw a torch, which meant his brother. This was where the room was, surely no other. He followed him down the passageway, trying hard not to go astray. Being as stealthy as he could, he snuck into the room where Jibu stood. He saw it was a tomb of beloved Hua and his totally awesome, legit wife, Tua. If you don't know, I'll tell you why the two that lie there are the parents of Queen Tai. Renofer is shocked, astounded, and slowly his temper grew as thin as sand. He picked up a jewel box and hurled it all his might, and he ran as fast as he could until he reached the light. The box hit Jibu right in the face as Renofer climbed the wall and rolled the rock into place. The thieves were trapped, they had nowhere to go, and Jibu and his buddies were really hanging low, but Renofer's best bro is the boy and old man, saw Renofer running as fast as he can. They yelled out his name, Renofer Dude. They could have been at a festival eating food. He stopped for a second, but not to chat. He asked the two to guard the tomb, or else his plan would go splat. They could not turn down their best friend's place, so they ran over to the broken tree. Renofer was stuck, said the spider to fly, and all of a sudden he realized he would talk to Queen Tai. He ran to the palace and through a courtyard. Someone caught him. I think it was a guard. He was taken to Kenefer, an overseer, who was very short and had an earring hanging from his ear. Kenefer believed him, or half of him at least, so he took him to the queen who was having a feast. Some royal guy thought he was all full of baloney, but when he pleaded back, he was not at all baloney. The queen asked him a question and he took a lucky yes, and the queen knew it was true, so she answered yes. The court ran over to the crime scene and soon the room was completely clean. A dude named Zobek, count that is, asked her here where the goblet tis. He told him it was in the stone cutting shop, in the broom closet where they keep the mop. The count sent his men, or his retinue, to fetch the cup to which he had a clue. In the meantime, Renofer took a shower and was rubbed with some oil that smelled like a flower. He had some bread and some waterfowl. It was pretty good, so he could not scowl. They went to the queen who asked the lad, what do you want? Really super duper bad. He then replied, gee, I don't know. I was kind of thinking a little burrito. Only a donkey, that is it. I'll give you the finest one in all of Egypt. Renoff a cup of pirates to earn the copper so he didn't live life like a helpless pauper. He learned how to trade for the rest of his life. He lived in peace without any strife.